So continuing on with our list of questions, we come to question five here, posed by Alona Vivian D. How can we draw graphs, animated or not, not only with linear axes, but also with logarithmic ones? Uh, the way you display a graph is to use the G display option. So what you do here is uh, you create an environment called a G display. So the standard window in VPython is a display window. This is G display, meaning graphical display. And there are all sorts of options for this. Uh, we can get into that shortly. Um, but what you want to set up is is a is a curve or a set of dots within that display. So your options there are to use a G curve or to use G dots. And this is basically a question of whether you want the data points connected or not. So this is a, uh, a plot with data points connected. And the G dots is going to give you a plot with data points not connected. Of course, the difference being if you want them displayed in a certain order and you want them to produce a nice smooth curve, you use the G curve. If you don't know what order they're going to be displayed in, so you might have a dot here, a dot here, here a dot, there a dot, everywhere a dot, dot, uh, then you want to use the G dots because you don't necessarily want to connect those arbitrarily. Let's try out the G curve today. The G dots is a pretty uh, standard extension of it. and you can, you can leave this blank or you can specify a color for the graph. So since we're working with a red sphere here, let's specify color dot red so that it matches. Um, and basically what you need to do is you just run your, your simulation like normal. You can even omit the animation if you really wanted to. You could just work with uh, X and Y as, as variables instead of attached to a sphere. But it's nice to have the animation to go with it too. But basically what you do is each frame of the animation, you need to add another data point to your curve. So you're trying to tell it to plot something. So uh, what you have to do is you have to give your G curve a name. So let's call this my curve. Uh, let's, in case somebody wants to uncomment this later, let's call this one my dots. Um, so what you would do down here in the loop, you would say my curve dot plot. And so this dot plot function is going to be looking for an X value, an independent variable value, and a Y value, a dependent variable value. Now calling them X and Y here can be confusing because X and Y are both the dependent variables and time is the independent variable. Um, so I probably should have said value for the horizontal axis, value for the vertical axis. Um, point being, what you do is you give it a position value and you tell it what you want the independent variable to be, in this case that's time, and you tell it what you want the dependent variable value to be. In that case, let's start with our x value. x is supposed to be going like the cosine of time, so we're looking for this red graph to come out looking like a cosine. Um, and so that should be it. It's going to do this every time we go over the loops, so every time we uh, we go over a frame in the animation, it will produce another point on the graph and connect it with a curve. So let's see what we get here. I'm going to hit Control 2. And oh dear, uh, my sphere is not defined. Oh, whoops, excuse me. I missed a comma. Not tiny sphere, time, comma, my sphere. There we go. X, comma, Y. Independent, comma, dependent. So what you get in the window is the same animation as before, but if you'll scroll down, you'll find the graph. And so here we're getting a graph of the X coordinate versus time. Um, I don't yet have any graph axis labels, but uh, we'll add those in just a minute. Right now I just want to confirm that it looks like a cosine. Cosine starts at one, goes down to negative one. And here's a trick, if you left click inside this thing, left click, right click, how do I get the, how do I get the trace in this thing? Uh, that's weird. My last graph let me do that. Okay, um, I'll figure that out later. Uh, so I know that it's supposed to have a period of 2 pi. I look over here at about 6.3-ish, and that's 2 pi, and there we go over one complete period. So that's cool. So that's the basics of how you get a graph out of vPython. And uh, you, can, you can scroll up here to the animation. The nice thing about having them together is that I can see x is about to reach 0. And here, lo and behold, X just crossed zero. So it's kind of nice to see them together. Now, if you want to have uh, some labels on this thing, let's look up GlowScript axis labels. It's either X title or X label. And I work with so many different languages, I don't remember which is which. 
Uh, so let's see, how do I get a label? Uh, label. Uh, okay, so that's how I can label a series. How do I get text of the label for the series? So that's cool. So I can do this as a uh, comma label equals x, oops, x root, x coordinate. So there I can get, that should give me a, an x chord in the legend, if I understood that documentation correctly. Yeah, there we go. There's x coordinate. That's awesome. Uh, let's see, now how do I get axis labels? Oh, there we go, it is X title. So I have to put that in the graph. So notice you put the legend label in the curve because that's unique to each curve. Here you put in the axis labels because, or the axis titles, I guess they're calling it, uh, because this is for the entire graph. So we can have X title equals time, Y title equals Let's call it position, because I want to do something cool in just a second and graph two things, because we do have two functions going on. We have X and Y. So here we've got our uh, time label here and our position label here. So my predilections as a physics educator are satisfied because now my axes are labeled, yay. <clears throat> but what you can do is, what's, uh, is you can create another plot for this display. So I can have my, let's call this one X curve and another one Y curve. Let's make that one red and let's make this one control C, control V. Let's make this one uh, green, why not? Um, so what I can do here is, I need to make sure I change the name here. So this is gonna be graphing the X coordinate. Now I can do the same thing with the Y coordinate. So I'm keeping my plot separate. I've got an X curve here, a Y curve here, and here I'm just gonna change this to Y. So notice I'm giving them the same independent variable, right? Because I need to graph them both versus time. Control two to run this. Now I should get two plots on that same graph. And lo and behold, I do. Oh, I forgot to change my, my legend label here. Well, pretend that says Y. Y is going like the sign which starts at zero, reaches a maximum at one, right at the same time that X reaches zero, which is cool. Uh, let's change that so that I don't forget. There we go. And so you can do this with however many functions you want. Alternatively, if you needed to have them in separate windows, so let's suppose you were graphing versus two different independent variables, um, you can make two different G displays. You just make a G display for each, um, for each window that you want. And basically before you make the call to the next G display, you give your G curve call here so that it associates it with the most recent G display. So this one's gonna be associated with G display number one. This is gonna be associated with G display number two. All right, so we've got our animation, we've got our X graph, we've got our Y graph. So you've got two different windows. If you needed those to be different windows, you can do that. Um, and just like with, with other things, you can give these uh, names. You can call this X display equals this, and you can give this one the name Y display equals this, so that if you need to make a change to them, so say for example, later you need to change their axes or their titles, or you even need to uh, create a new curve to add to one of them, you can reference these names later. So you're, 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 you're saving them, you're saving those uh, graphs, uh, excuse me, these graphing windows under those names, which is pretty cool. And you notice the axes automatically adjust for you uh, based on the, the values that you're getting. Um, if you know them ahead of time, you can specify those. You can even tell it not to auto scale, but for most applications, it's just easier to have it auto scale. It always gives you a little bit of, of a wiggle room at the top and bottom of the graph, which is pretty cool. So that's the basics of how you make a graph. Again, G dots is just the same thing with dots instead of a connected graph. Um, so again, keep those questions coming and I'm looking forward to answering them. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.